Hello, this is Sean Hart with Absurd Interactive. I'm here to introduce our first product, which supports all iOS devices, including iPad, iPhone, and iPod. And the name of the game that I'll be introducing to you is This Is Not a Ball Game. It's inspired by Rene Magritte, the Belgium surrealist painter, and uh, we've been working on it for approximately two years, uh, myself and two others. And we tried to uh, emphasize quality um, when producing this game. Um, that's one of the main points we wanted to this is not a show game. going forward while developing this game on iOS because we felt that there is um, somewhat lack of quality in terms of 3D games on the iOS and we wanted to really show people that it's, it's possible to put something out there. Um, so with this game we uh, wanted to go through the whole Art Nouveau style which is um, inspired by the early 20th century artists and um, we uh, pretty much had that type of art style to influence our whole uh, game and so this the, this the UI we built in this game we wanted to um, really make it stand out and be different than usual and um, to, to begin this the game starts with a, a wheel that you can move around. It's uh, inspired by the old rotary dial phones that kind of um, were used in the early 20th century. And so everything's kind of inspired by the early 20th century feel, feel and look. So the player will move the dial around like a rotary dial um, telephone and then they'll make a selection on the buttons. And so from there they start, they hit start. and from here, this is the level select screen, and you'll be able to pick the different levels you go to. Um, right now, there's a lot of UI interface that may seem pretty overwhelming right now, but um, we'll have a tutorial in the game that'll explain um, things better to the user so they aren't overwhelmed in terms of how to use everything. And so we'll begin by going um, to one of the first levels. It's level 1-2. And um, yeah, as, as we said, the, the game was inspired from early 20th century. Uh, a French Parisian circus is kind of what we're going for. And um, begin. That's, that's pretty much it. Um, in terms of gameplay, so the whole object of the game is you start off with a ball on a ramp, and you have a limited amount of balls. Right now we have 200. And you have to launch the ball into the, the scene, the 3D scene, and try to knock down as many objects as possible while also knocking down those three purple star blocks you see with the uh, stars. And once you break those three star blocks, then we will beat them. And as you can see, we already beaten two of those star blocks. And as, as you break them, they go into the lanterns and they light up the lanterns. And um, the, the trick of the, the, um, the, the main gameplay component that we're trying to emphasize is the player's interaction with um, swiping on the iPad. So you swipe your the the new high score. The uh, star tooth, and if you hit all three, you beat the level with a firework show. Congratulations! It looks like we got a gold trophy, so we did pretty good. You and also, as you saw in the trophy. iOS pop-up, there was an emphasis on social interaction, which we have um, through sharing with Facebook and Twitter and friends. And we also have Game Center uh, challenges that you can challenge people with. And uh, we have a lot of social interactions, Begin. which um, we hope players will like a lot. It's also worth mentioning that um, depending on how hard you swipe on the screen, um, is how far the ball will go. Um, so if you do a little uh, swipe, uh, that was a medium swipe, you got a green uh, scrape, your, your ball will go pretty far. Um, if you get a blue swipe, that means you didn't really put very much effort into it, so you just uh, tap, swipe the screen a little bit, and if you really are going all out, um, launching the ball as far as you can, you'll get a red scrape. And so it's really based on how uh, hard you, you throw the ball and so um, we really emphasize Congratulations. The and the player interaction which we think you've won a gold in, trophy in terms of giving uh, the players lots of feedback on how they're doing and it helps with playing the game from level to level and just the um, 
moment to moment. Um, feedback with the game. Begin. And so uh, another thing worth mentioning is that you can touch different parts of the screen. Um, so if you tap on the sign, it'll zoom in. It'll show you the score, the high score, and how many uh, the score you need for the different trophies to unlock. Um, we we really uh, wanted to show off the interaction on the iOS, and this is how many balls and what level you're in currently. And uh, we really wanted to emphasize the interaction with the user and show that make a game like that do a touch. And if you swipe the top of the screen, you'll rotate the the game view in 360 degrees. And if you do a pinch view on the screen, you'll zoom in. So it'll really help you uh, see around the 3D scene. And in each each level, we have a different mechanic and new puzzle elements in our game. And one of them is the cannon, as you can see here. Um, if you throw the ball into the cannon, it'll hit parts that you couldn't previously reach, which is the ball. And it'll help you um, beat that one. And there'll be certain levels where you can only beat them with the cannon. So you have to hit your shot properly. And we have lots of little mechanics there that we try to Congratulations. Yeah, put in our game that will really give a bronze a lot of trophy. replay value to our game. And it'll let uh, users go back and try to get better scores and try to beat levels in different ways. And uh, we try to really emphasize replayability and give the users as much as they want uh, uh, for, for what they're playing. Begin! And so in the, in in uh, one of the main mechanics we also wanted to show off is that you have different balls. Um, right now you're just using the regular ball. It's the plain ball without any abilities. But um, if you select the different balls from the ball select screen um, that you haven't unlocked yet, it'll show a video of the ball. And this one's the bouncy ball. And um, it's pretty much self-explanatory. It's like uh, one of those toy bouncy balls you had as a kid. Uh, you kind of play with jacks or something like that. And um, the, the trick with this ball is um, it continually bounces throughout the scene. So with the regular ball you throw it, <laughs> it'll hit the ground and kind of stop. With the bouncy ball you can ricochet or it just throw it and let it go and eventually maybe it'll bounce back and hit something. So there's there's um, different interesting mechanics with each of the seven balls we have total. Um, and we really put a lot of time and effort into making them all stand out and feel different, which should uh, make the player um, intrigued to use all the balls. And um, this is the shop which we've uh, built. We, we could have done a 2D shop, but we went all out and tried to really uh, take the player into this world and so we built a 3D um, shop with a 3D interface. You can click on it and we'll zoom into the different balls and then from there you can buy more balls. Um, so that way if you run out of balls you can uh, refill as you play. And that's that, that adds an extra dimension of strategy. Thank you! Game, which uh, I think will make it more interesting for the play. And also you can unlock the balls with the different currency um, we have in our game. And anytime you unlock a ball, you get the ball, a few of the balls for free, so that way um, you can try the ball out yourself. And right now we're trying out the, the bouncy ball, which, as you can see, has different physics. And, uh, the it's pretty elastic, you know, so it's more random than the regular ball. And uh, through beating each level and getting scores and different high scores, um, you unlock currency, uh, money, and tickets. In the game shop, you can uh, buy more balls and refill your stock if you need to balls. We, we also wanted Congratulations. to... Congratulations! Uh, You've won a bronze that we trophy! We really tried to add as much content as possible for the player. We wanted to have different ball types and different um, uh, mechanics for the player to use. And we just really wanted to keep things diverse uh, to make it interesting for the player. Um, just so that they're always something for them to try out or to to come back to, and it just really keeps keeps the game lively and, and fresh overall. And that's that's an important um, point when it comes to quality. That's something we thought um, really benefited. Begin.
and um, like, such as for for here, for example, there's a TNT box, and um, if you hit it, it'll explode. And, and part of the uh, great thing about using a live, real physics uh, engine is that there's the random randomness and unpredictability that makes kind of um, each level different, and you can solve it in different. As you can see there, it's, it's great and that kind of blue stuff up. It's all like, you know, I know. I know. Things, and you think they'll uh, really enjoy that. They'll be able to play levels differently and solve them in ways that we would have never Congratulations. Even imagined to uh, be able to. You've won a gold them. trophy! And that's, that's, that was really important for us to kind of try to keep it different. And it's important to note that we're using the Unity 3D engine. It's a really great uh, engine. I would recommend it for any amateur uh, game people out, game developers out there, and also for professionals as well. Begin. And uh, in in this level, you can see there's a uh, fan, which is another mechanic. It uh, pretty much blows air upwards or outwards, depending on where it's placed, and you can use it um, to redirect the ball in any direction you want. Um, yeah. Sometimes it's it's it helps you to redirect the ball, but also at times it can be uh, an obstacle. So it just depends on the level. Right now we're going to try to use the fan to uh, skip the ball a little bit straight. We're going to try to use the fan to do it. And so as you can see, we're going to redirect the ball. Uh, it pushes it. Away. And then if we're really good, we can uh, use it to uh, hit the star block and see if we can do it. Oh. Almost got it. Oh, yeah, we got it. Okay. Yeah. So that's the... Uh, the fireworks celebration at the end. We have every time. And, and you, as you can see in the scene, you get coins um, for beating the level, and those are the coins that pop up during the end firework celebration. And uh, those, those are the coins you can use to spend in the shop later as you're playing um, to unlock th or to, to to buy more balls to use them if you run out. The um, the Art style of the game, as, as we mentioned before, was inspired uh, by the Art Nouveau the movement, which was the early 20th century. And um, we Begin. really have to thank our artist, uh, Salim, for putting a heavy emphasis on that and uh, just really bringing, bringing the world to, to life. And uh, here's another gameplay mechanic. It's a magnet. It's kind of the opposite of the fan. It'll uh, pull objects into it. So if you throw a ball by it, it'll have a gravitational area of influence that'll pull the ball inwards. And you can use that to kind of arc the ball. And sometimes you'll need to do that to arc it into, uh, like we just did there, arc it into the, the star cubes. And, uh, other times it'll be an obstacle, just like um, and um, looks like we just did that moving cutout. And uh, the cutouts themselves are kind of characters within our game. Um, they're different pop-ups that we kind of hit and you get extra points for and uh, they kind of add an interesting element to the game, um, more strategy. Um, we were kind of inspired, uh, actually it's worth noting, um, we were inspired by a, f a few things, but, but one of the things was actually um, the Modest Mouse music video, um, Float On. We, uh, they had the cutout pop-ups that we always thought were very interesting and we um, really enjoyed that video so we thought that would be kind of an interesting inspiration for the pop-ups. And uh, here's an element of the game. So so we you have a magic meter which runs out as you do each level um, because there's the genie who um, is helps you out throughout the levels and she's omnipotent and she's kind of, she's the uh, voice actress that we're using. But um, there's the genie right now, actually. In the shop. 
But uh, she uses magic every time you go into a level, and so if you run out, there's a different strategy. You can use currency to refill the magic meter, or you can wait a couple minutes to do it. Um, but we also have an RPG element where you can upgrade your magic meters to show kind of progress. And it also, to encourage, we invite friends with the uh, social media interaction. Um, that's to encourage social media, like we said. And um, so right now we're going to upgrade. And as you can see, we upgraded one, and so now we have more magic. And so another important element in our game which really helps out is the phonographs. Um, they're a puzzle element which changes the mechanics of the game. For the first half of the game, we kind of are all physics and want the user to learn how to use use the physics system and to kind of really get used to the controls and master them and stuff. And then the second half of the game, we switch it up and we make everything kind of puzzle-based. So you have to kind of solve puzzles. And one of the main key elements to solving the puzzles is using these phonographs. And as you'll see in a bit, um, when you hit the phonographs, you either activate them or deactivate them. Um, when they're deactivated, they're red and they're not playing any music. But when you activate them, they turn green and then they play music. And the music's actually layered <coughs> one on top of another for each phonograph you hit. So there's actually layers and you can you can kind of create a song um, every time you hit a phonograph. And when you when you um, hit them all together they trigger something. So so when you hit this guy, he triggered the uh, chain, the gold ball that you fell down and blasted half the scene. And so when we uh, hit this other phonograph that'll trigger the other chain. But um depending on the level it'll trigger different things within the, the level that'll help you solve <coughs> the level and it'll uh, it, it adds for a whole other depth of replayability in terms of solving puzzles in there. and so um, yeah, another thing worth noting is there's also a reverse state which you, if you hit a phonograph sometimes they'll turn yellow and then they'll play the music backwards as a uh, visual and audio cue, which we um, tried to emphasize in our game a lot, visual and audio cues. And when it's yellow, it'll um, play stuff backwards. So, for instance, we'll have conveyor belts or different objects like that, and if you hit it backwards, then the conveyor belt will actually run backwards. So it's it's a visual and audio cue, like we said, which we felt was really important. We wanted to emphasize audio, visual, and gameplay. Those were the main Begin. three objectives when making our game, and we think we pulled it off pretty well. Um, uh, we spent a lot of time uh, working on the quality. Um, the game actually took about two years to make, which is a lot longer than most most iOS games, and, and we just really wanted to create a world uh, that really emphasizes quality um, and breathes life. And that's, that's why we worked on the audio and, and visual aspect of the game for such a long time. And so as you can see here, we hit the, uh, the phonographs and it causes the conveyor belts to be activated. And it plays the music's layered like we said. And if we're good enough, um, let's see here. There. It will, as I said before, it turns it turns it into reverse. It plays the music backwards, as you can see it too. And <laughs> you can try to um, use the different states of the phonographs to try to solve the puzzle. So we're like, well, how do we get this phonograph? So we start off with this guy going forward. And if we're good again. There we go. Okay, now we just need to hit it one more time to activate the state into a, a forward state. Sometimes, you know, it's just going to take a while to hit things. There we go. And so we hit it into the forward state, and that sends the star cubes forward. And that one falls off. And we go. Oh, maybe not. Uh, oh, else, yeah. Looks like we're we'll have to get the balls. There we go. So we're gonna unlock the asteroid ball. We're going to uh, 
buy a few of those and then we're going to use it. The asteroid ball is like a projectile. It's it's kind of you you swipe the screen and then once it's in midair you tap the screen and you launch it off and it just shoots straight forward as fast as possible like a projectile. And uh it's it's very useful to hit objects that are hard to hard to get at. Um, especially objects that are very far away. So if you run out of balls, we, we have a pop-up that comes and it'll take you straight to the shop. Um, or, or you can just continually use different balls. We'll try to solve it in a different way. There's, there's a lot of different ways you can solve uh, the puzzles we have built into this game, as you can see. Let's try some ingenuity instead of just the straight-up brute force of the asteroid ball. There we go. Let's see if this works. Oh, there we go. So sometimes some ingenuity works over brute force. Um, so there's, as you can see, there's many different ways to solve the levels, and um, we really wanted to emphasize that in, in um, the gameplay as the players playing. Um, something else. Uh, Begin. To note is once you beat um, a level Welcome set, which is ten levels, we take you to the special level, which is the target practice, is what we call it. It was inspired by kind of the Street Fighter II arcade bonus level where you beat up the car. We kind of were like, well, we should do a bonus level too, but we didn't quite know what we wanted to do. So when we uh, showed off the game to uh, a few people at an event, um, this old guy came by and he said, you know. You, you guys need a shooting gun, right? You know, I just want to throw stuff and hit, hit a bunch of targets. And so when we were talking to him, we are just kind of like, yeah, you know what, this guy knows what he's talking about, so let's, let's go with that. And so we implemented this shooting gallery, which um, you can play every uh, ten levels. And after you beat ten levels, um, you, you're taken here, and then every target you hit, you get more and more coins. So you try to get as high of a score as possible, and then you get um, lots of coins based off of that to kind of rebuild how many, uh, refill, restock your coins to help you buy more stuff. And also worth mentioning, um, this is in all the levels, but um, I'll point it out now, is that we have a combo. Um, you can see it in the top left corner, and it's it increments every time you hit a target. Um, and this, in, this includes hitting star blocks or hitting anything, and every time you hit something and throw the ball, um, you're rewarded with a plus nine combo, which will increase the final score you get overall. And uh, also worth mentioning is uh, you can see this rainbow stripe on the on the screen after you throw the ball. That shows um, how you swipe for your last swipe, and um, that's in every level as well. And um, uh, the other thing with the shooting gun is we give you infinite balls just so you don't have to worry about inventory or anything. You can just kind of swipe as as much as possible and just rack up by score. It, that's that's unlike the the rest of the, to the game where you're given a final um, We want to do different strategies depending on <coughs> depending on what you're doing in the game. It's also worth noting that um, we spent a lot of time developing uh, the genie and the voice acting, and we really wanted her to have a presence within our game. We had a uh, voice actor. Her name's Mariel Nero. She's a uh, really good and she, she's local so um, she really she really gave uh, the character a lot of personality and, and sh she was we, we asked her to have a French influenced um, voice which I think she really pulled off and she really gave the gave the uh, game depth we just wanted to give you guys a glimpse of the game and the world we built for the past two years of this is not a ball game and we wanted to just kind of show off you know the different mechanics um, there's so much more with all the different balls that we haven't shown and the different gameplay mechanics and puzzles that we haven't shown either um, this game is a universal app which is important to note um, that means that you can download it for any iOS device and it's supported on iCloud um, which means you can back up all your saved data there and also worth noting is we have Game Center so we have leaderboards and achievements to um, 
add to the replayability in depth, and we spent a lot of time on the uh, achievements to keep the player engaged, so you should enjoy that. And the game will be out next month in April, um, later in April sometime, and we'll have more details um, as it gets closer to launch. Uh, you, if you uh, want more information, you can follow us on Twitter, and, or like us on Facebook, and we'll have more and more updates as we get closer to launch in uh, the next few weeks. All right, this is Sean Hart with Absurd Interactive, and uh, thank you for watching our gameplay video.